Welcome everyone, it's 2019. So that means it's time to do the 2018 year in review. And of course, it'll be the Zojo year in review. So here's what Zojo looks like in its latest release. And let's do a rewind and look at some of the highlights. So in 2018, there were four Zojo releases, and there were also two Zojo-related conferences. So we'll start at the beginning. Zojo release one, 2018 release one, came out on April 17th, and it had over 270 items in it. <clears throat> Some of the major changes. 64-bit Windows debugging finally arrived. This is one of the last components to our 64-bit transition. And I know all of our Windows users were thrilled to be able to run their builds in 64-bit and use the debugger. In addition, a big change was made to the Windows framework to allow it to reduce the flicker that is often seen in standard Win32 UI controls. iOS iOS apps were updated to use the latest iOS SDK so that they can support iPhone 10 screens, which were pretty new at the time. And a new feature was added to Zojo for those using Zojo Cloud so that you can now display server statistics for the server and the apps running on it. <coughs> the web file uploader control had a few enhancements. You can now drag and drop files you want to upload directly onto the control. You can now add multiple files at one time. It added support for filtering, better upload progress tracking, and larger file support. This is what the server statistics feature looks like. It's a window that you actually open in Zojo itself, and it shows you the overall server stats, and then you can choose from the list of apps that are running on the server to see individual stats about the app. Shortly after release one came out, it was time for the Zojo Developer Conference. And this was held April 24th to the 27th in Denver, Colorado. Here you can see Jeff doing the keynote on the first day. In the, this was the grand ballroom. And at XDC 2018, there were over 34 sessions. A wide variety of presenters, including Zojo staff and engineers, and uh, lots of attendees as well gave presentations. <clears throat> there were over 100 attendees, 25%, uh, which were first-timers to a Zojo conference, which was great to see. And during the keynote and in the sessions afterwards, a few major initiatives were uh, brought up and talked about. And I'll just highlight them here. Uh, the first was API 2.0. This is a new unification of the overall Zojo framework. Web 2.0 is the next version of the web framework you use to make web apps. And this uh, Web 2.0 adds lots of new controls and UI layouts and brings uh, Zojo web apps up to a more modern style from when they were first introduced in 2010. And then also Android support, Android mobile support particularly, as our next OS target that we are working on. <coughs> After XTC, Work continued on the next release, which was 2018 release two, and that came out on August 7th. And it had over 160 items. Major changes, which include continued op optimizations for Windows. The change to the framework to reduce Flickr did have a side effect of making certain things behave more slowly. So we continue to investigate and optimize that. And that was a big thing that was added to release two. iOS added several improvements. 
iOS table, added the pull to refresh feature that you may have seen on other apps. <clears throat> also added to iOS table was better support for having various row heights when you use custom tables in the cells of your iOS table. So it allows you for a much more flexible UI design. A new feature of iOS 11 was large titles and iOS views now support these. And the iOS HTML, HTML viewer control uh, now uses the more modern, modern WK web view for better compatibility with declares and other things. And the little teaser for one of the first things in API 2.0, the resources property and the get resource methods that were in the zojo.io namespace special folder uh, module in the past were moved over to the, the global special folder functions so that they can be used with all your uh, project types. And it's super handy because if you're including, you know, anything with your project, you often put that in the resources folder and this makes it an easy way to get access to it. <clears throat> and SQLite database was updated to a more current version, something we are trying to stay on top of. In addition, HTML viewer itself was updated on Linux to work with WebKit 2 when available. And on Windows, the latest Chromium embedded framework, uh, that CAF3, is also now uh, included in your apps when WebKit is selected as the renderer. And uh, you can see here the couple of the iOS enhancements. The, uh, the pull to refresh, you just kind of drag down with your finger on uh, a list and you get that animation and you can uh, reload your data as you want. And the large titles show up here. They particularly look nice on uh, iPhone 10 style devices, uh, but look, uh, look neat here, much easier to see, obviously. Next in line was the Monkey Bread Software Conference. This was September 6th and 7th in Munich, Germany. This is not a Zojo conference. This is the Monkey Bread Conference, but there were a couple Zojo folks in attendance. You can see here, sorry for the dark photo, uh, the lights were often dimmed in the room to make it easier to see the screen. But you see quite a few people there. And at the bottom we have a photo of, that's not all the attendees, but those are all the winners of prizes that were given away at the end. Uh, the MBS conference had over 14 sessions with over 50 attendees. And as I mentioned, a couple of Zojo staff, uh, Jeff Perlman was there. He gave the uh, one of the keynotes at the beginning, and I also attended and gave the first session of day two, uh, recapping uh, some of the, the newer initiatives we're working on, primarily API 2.0, Web 2.0 and Android. Next in line for Zojo is not 2017 release three, but 2018 release three on October 23rd. And it contained over 120 items. And it's major changes was kind of a surprise feature, uh, which was Mojave's dark mode support. Apple announced this at their WWDC conference over the summer, and we thought that that looked pretty cool and also made the Zojo IDE itself look pretty cool. So we uh, jumped on adding support for that because developers often like to work in dark mode. So now the IDE itself runs in dark mode and you can make apps that are dark mode enabled. In addition, we continue to improve Windows. Uh, the native label control is now used for better performance. And text rendering has also been improved to match um, uh, the built-in controls. 
And the last piece of the 64-bit transition was, uh, was added here. Uh, that is incremental compilation. And this means that essentially when you hit run in uh, Zojo IDE and you have your app set to be 64-bit, it now will build much faster, you know, the second, third, fourth time, et cetera, because it won't have to recompile the entire project. It only will recompile things that you have changed. That greatly improves your testing cycle. iOS projects were updated to work with Xcode 10 and the latest iOS 12 simulator. And SQLite was updated again. We also introduced the new documentation wiki, something that was announced at XDC. Here you can see what Mojave Doc Mode looks like. And this is, uh, this is a web project. And you can see the overall different theme, way the IDE looks. This is Eddie's electronics project opened up in dark mode. You can see, you know, this is a bit easier on the eyes, particularly if you are working at night. And the Doc Center Wiki has an all-new layout, uh, updated content, more content. Content is still being added even today as we speak but that is now available and is your source for all Zojo related documentation. The final release of the year is 2018 release four. And apparently I've, even though I reviewed this multiple times, I did not notice I didn't type the right year. And that came out on December 11th with over 110 items. And its major changes include the first new API 2.0 class, and that's called URL Connection. And this is essentially an updated version of HTTP socket classes. Uh, there's the original HTTP socket and HTTP secure socket uh, that have been in Zojo for many, many, many years. And then the Zojo.net HTTP socket that was introduced a few years ago. And URL Connection essentially is a replacement for both of those. Uh, it's more modern, uses all the latest protocols, has support for asynchronous and synchronous connections, and is uh, pretty easy to use. So uh, that's one of the first things we rolled out. We added a few new constants to uh, help you check if your app is running in dark mode or if it is supporting high DPI. There were already uh, some functions and stuff in there. These new constants allow you to use uh, you know, pound if commands to block out code, which uh, was a common request. We continue to improve the dark mode support that was added in the prior version, make sure everything looks as good as it can. And we updated iOS to the latest SDK yet again to make sure that we could support the new iPad Pros that were released uh, after 2018 R3 came out. And we also updated the macOS builds to use a much newer macOS SDK. So we're now using the 10.14 SDK. And this allows you to, particularly if you're working with the Claire's, to access newer uh, features of macOS. SQLite was updated to 3.25 which is a pretty significant release because it added a couple of big new features. So you want to check that out. Uh, I'll have a link in the video notes. There um, was a new feature to allow you finally to be able to alter a table and change a column name, something which we, has been missing from SQLite since forever, but most other databases have. And also uh, another new powerful feature, uh, I think it was called table queries or something like that, that allows for you some interesting ways to uh, group and order and uh, handle some of your query data back. So that wraps up 2018. So what's coming in 2019? Well, like I could specifically say, right? We don't generally talk too much about what's coming down in the future, but you can kind of 
get a feel for what you're going to start to see popping up in 2019 based on what we've actually talked about in 2018. So, of course, you're going to see regular releases from us. We strive to put out them, put out Zoja releases quarterly. So that's typically four a year. Sometimes there's only three, depending on what gets included, but uh, we shoot for four. What's going to be in those releases? Well, we fix bugs. We fix lots of bugs. And also, new features are added. And of course, our priority items that we're working on are the same ones we talked about at XDC last year, which is API 2.0, Web 2.0, and Android. I can't say which or if any of those will be coming in 2019, but I'm sure you'll be hearing about them throughout 2019. So do stay tuned. And if you are not already, be sure to um, pay attention to the beta, beta channel in the Zojo forum. One thing that I can say is coming in 2019 is the 2019 Zojo Developer Conference. And this year, it'll be in Miami, Florida, May 1st through the 3rd, which I am told is a great time of the year to be in Miami. It won't be quite too hot yet, but it'll be hot. The uh, hotel is Marriott, which you can see here, and it is right on the water. So some gorgeous views. Might be a little hard to... Uh, Pay attention during some of the sessions if you, we've got one of these waterside uh, views. I don't know yet. The room rates are low, uh, $149. So be sure to book your stay there. And we hope to see lots of people at the Zojo Developer Conference in Miami, Florida. And that about wraps up the recap. I can always be reached for questions via email, all at zojo.com. And you can find me on Twitter, at Lefevre. And I always like to remind people, always head over to zojo.com slash download and check out the latest version. Hopefully this recap reminded you of some of the things that were added throughout the year that maybe you haven't had a chance to look at, or maybe some things that you weren't even aware came out. So give the latest version a download, check out the release notes, and build great apps. I want to thank everyone for attending. Have a great day. <laughs>